Yeah, my name is Hoy, and I'm a consultant psychiatrist, professor of psychiatry, and editor of Global Psychiatry Archives. Um, this is a paper which hopefully gives you some insight in the prevalence of body dysmorphic disorder. It's a review by Anton and Gavin Minty, and uh, they reviewed quite a few papers, and they have uh, collected this in a table, and if you ever want to find anything about the previous studies and prevalence of body dysmorphic order. Here, this paper is a good start. Right, okay, so what did they do? We come to the Prisma um, Prisma flow diagram. So, you know, they identified uh, 586 um, reports looking at body dysmorphic disorder and prevalence, and uh, 591 were screened, and uh, for, for several reasons, reports were excluded because I didn't just mention it, but didn't really focus on the prevalence. So it might be they looked at the prevalence of schizophrenia and just mentioned body dysmorphic disorder. So we would we, we would be interested or they would be interested in the prevalence of body dysmorphic disorder. Eventually they came up with 81 studies and these are the 81 studies. And I wouldn't want to look in detail, but uh, there's uh, usually a couple of hundred patients um, in different from different countries, very often non-randomly selected. Uh, so it's a bit uh, difficult sometimes. Um, but there's also some studies here, this Bullman study from Germany, which uh, has a random selection from the population. Right, okay, so looking at these papers, so there's quite a lot of information, but what might be more interesting in looking at subgroups so let's say that way, if you look at the prevalence, you have 0.5% and 50%, but that's not the general population. We come to these different um, subgroups in a minute, in a second. So these are studies which looked at the prevalence in the general population, and you, the highest ones are 2.9%, uh, depending on the criteria, DSM-5 or DSM-4, and the lower rates are 0.5%. Uh, respectively 0.7. So these are studies from Sweden, Italy, Germany, and the US. And so you see the prevalence of this population. So that's not too much. And there seems to be some relationship with the time. So over the years, it seems to be that there's more awareness and more interest in body dysmorphic disorder. Right. So there are others, so that's when we're looking at the prevalence in the general population. This is a student population, seems to be that a bit higher. So the question is, you know, what happened? Uh, is it more awareness? Is younger people are more there more interested in body dysmorphic order or even in their body? So um, the prevalence in the students goes from 1.3 to uh, 5%. I'm not sure whether a clinical sample is really um, uh, a good would measure. So this study from Argentina, I think it's a bit uh, an exception. There are studies in dermatology cohorts. Uh, they're much higher because these are people who have cosmetic problems or have problems with their body or faces. Um, so let's say that way, they come into the uh, whatever 4.2% and the higher ones go into um, the into the 30s, 40s. So one study even finds uh, people with hair loss that they uh, have uh, specific problems there and they have a body dysmorphic disorder. Right, in dermatology patients, we mentioned this. The psychiatric cohorts don't do too badly. The studies are a bit in a clinical sample in depressed women, it's a bit higher, but other samples, uh, it's not too bad. Depends a little bit on the criteria, but I can't go into this detail. So let's say that way, uh, psychiatric patients, when they're depressed, then or people with anorexia, they have higher rates of body dysmorphic disorder, but others have lower rates in their whatever, 2% or 1.8%, as you mentioned, as was mentioned. Right, okay, and then you have uh, people in surgical cohorts, so you have different uh, areas, so people who look for cosmetic sur surgery, 
they might have a body dysmorphic disorder. Um, so, but that varies very much with the sample. I think there's a big bias in, in, in these samples, which are collected when you look at surgical cohorts and whether they have cosmetic surgery. People with cosmetic surgery are more likely to have body dysmorphic disorder, which is understandable. And last but not least, there are quite a few um, body areas which are affected, you know, interestingly, arms, breast, chin, this is in alphabetical order, ears, eyes, face, uh, fatness, the genitals, the hair seems to be a bit of a focus, so hair and, and face, but also the nose, the skin, uh, these are all problems which are focus zones and uh, which are affected by body dysmorphic disorder. So it's quite um, quite an interesting paper. Lots of variation between uh, general population students, um, dermatology patients, surgery patients, and the areas seems to be the most uh, the visible one: the face, um, the hair, and uh, the build or weight. So that's um, the summary, and I hope you are interested. If you're interested in this paper or liked it, then please like us or even subscribe to the channel. We will regularly present some of the newer papers um, which we publish, and uh, this can be heard on the way to the work or on the way back and uh, in the in other situations. So I think you can you can enjoy this, and I thank you for your interest. And if you want to read the paper, certainly it can be read on our website, www.globalpsychiatry.co.uk. Thanks a lot for your interest.